here to ask him any more questions. The Gospel of the Lord. Won't you please be seated? Good morning. Our stewardship theme is Courage in the Cornerstone. Stewardship is taking care of what you've been given or entrusted to, and it applies to all areas of life. It's a spiritual discipline. Courage is a heart word. The root word of courage is core, which is the Latin word for heart. Brene Brown, a brilliant researcher, author, and public speaker on the issues of shame, courage, vulnerability, and worthiness, and how they're all connected, translates the word courage to wholeheartedness. Put your whole heart in the cornerstone. Are you living wholeheartedly? To live a courageous life, one must take risks and be vulnerable. When you are vulnerable and take a risk, you're giving others permission to do the same. You're saying it's safe to take risks here. Now when I say safe, I don't mean you won't fall or fail or get hurt. Safe as in you aren't the only one living with a heart wide open. You are not alone. Some examples that come to mind when I think about being courageous or living wholeheartedly. I think about Nancy and Frank Schwears and how they faithfully host a Zoom coffee hour every Sunday after worship and make to maintain the fellowship and some, some sort of normalcy. I think about Fred Plank, Mary Olive Judson, and Andrea Nassis, who helped me deliver children's formation goodie bags twice during the last six months. I think about all the teachers at St. David's and at Wilshire Elementary and all of our schools who have worked many, many hours learning a new skill to teach our children. I think about St. David's church builders and founders who had a vision and planted a church in Terrell Hills over 70 years ago. I think about all the times that I've listened to one of you share something vulnerable. I think about all the ushers and staff and volunteers who have worked to put all of these worship services together. I think about all the healthcare workers who've battled this pandemic. I think about all of you who have had hard conversations with your loved ones about death and heaven and sickness and health. I think about all of you who have helped and loved your neighbor despite the hardships that we have made, we have faced these past six months. It's been hard for everyone, but we are still here. We are a community whose hearts are seeking the hope promised to us through Jesus. Some days are very dim. It's almost as though all the hope that is left is just a glimmer that seems so far away. But then the glimmer gets stronger with a phone call from one of you, a youth group reunion in person after so many months apart, a handwritten thank you note Virtual school chapel, altar flowers appearing every week, joyful texts and photos of all of you opening goodie bags and receiving altar flowers, witnessing the little food pantries be filled each week, communing through Facebook Live worship, handing out snack packs to our neighbors at Wilshire in the carpool line, hearing children again in the building, calling a new rector, <laughs> drive through backpack blessings, and partaking in the Eucharist. I could go on. I am so grateful for these glimmers of hope. 
Here at St. David's, we peeled back the layers, the embellishments, the programs, the adornments, and went back to our core, our heart. Why does this community exist? We exist to bring hope. We exist to foster connection. Connection with our Father in Heaven and with one another. It takes courage to show up with a heart wide open. It takes courage to give love to one another. It takes courage to give money, to give precious time, and to give of your heart. It's vulnerable. We are all broken, and we tell ourselves this story that what we might give might be abused or wasted. Let's just keep it for ourselves. We'll keep it right here, and it's safe right here. Oh, but I'm here to tell you today that God wants more for you. Life is a gift, it is short. And the kingdom of heaven is here now. During these last six to seven months, we've made telephone calls. Can y'all believe it? We wrote letters. We stuffed and delivered goodie bags for children and families and for those who might be staying home. With the help of Jackie and Martha, our flower ministry stayed alive. And two to three families each week received altar flowers, fresh flowers. We've recorded and edited what has seemed like hundreds, maybe even thousands of hours of video footage for worship services. We've gathered on Zoom, just like most of the world, for meetings and for coffee hours. I got to watch the worship service online two weeks ago because I was sick in bed. Three people were baptized, 14 people were confirmed, and two people were received. I appreciated technology more than ever that day. It broke my heart to not be here in person. But somehow the Holy Spirit transcended through the internet, and it filled the cracks of my broken heart. I felt it in my bones, and I was brought to tears. After all that we've been through, that worship service was an abundance of hope. The desire for community and connection combined with all of those sacraments, boom, transcendence. I'm sure that's how Peter and James and John felt on the mountain that day when Jesus was transfigured and they saw Elijah and Moses too. And when Moses was leading the Israelites in the desert, talk about hard, God would speak to Moses, the Holy Spirit would move, and they would find hope again. All the readings for today have to do with our heart, our core. God wants our whole heart. He created us to live wholeheartedly. God knows that comes with risk. To live a courageous life is risky. But if we live like this, we will prosper, bearing fruit in due season. And 2020 is a season. We will indeed prosper and bear much fruit. We will with God's help, right? The fruit may look a little different, but it still is beautiful. God says, I am the Lord. You are my people, and I love you. Take courage in the cornerstone who is my son Jesus. Take courage and help fulfill the mission of the church, loving your neighbor as yourself. Yes, you will struggle. Yes, it will be hard. But yes, you will find hope and great joy. The hope of Christ dwells in all of us. You may be tired and empty. You may be at peace. Or you may be somewhere in between. Well, take courage. You are in a good place. The Holy Spirit is here. 
Let's crack open our hearts. Amen.